what this conversation is about is different ways in which not just active inference, but science has collided with internal intuition and led to transformational journeys of different kinds. I started out as an economist and as a technologist working at institutions such as the World Bank and IBM doing large-scale IT implementation projects. It was often the human factors that got in the way of success or failure. That has been a kind of orienting how to both be informed by what the, the science and the math provides and then build the biologically based, if you will, a way of sense making. One of the things that economists have is a point of view about what it means to grow the culture, to grow the society, primarily denominated in dollars. I came across a chart by an economist that showed that GDP had tripled in the last 60 years, both in the UK and the US, and that well-being had not changed at all. He left office, was kicked out. Um, he went back to academia and started looking into what does science show moves the needle of well-being and how do we make this socially more contagious. As someone who was trained in a particular lens, a particular perspective, what I had been trained to do and how to um, cause effect and impact was in fact not moving the needle of well-being. And so there was this kind of personal and professional crisis that led to this journey of unlearning and in both personal, interpersonal, and organizational ways of recalibrating the experience of what does it mean to pay attention to thriving. Not only do I understand how I need to be to experience uh, more goosebumps in my life, I understand uh, how I need to be to experience connection and belonging and to co-create with others a sense of purpose and of meaning that I had not had previously. One of the surprising findings for me, an epidemiologist, basically, he um, was studying how do emotions spread. In studying this, realized that your happiness influenced by the people that you're surrounded by, but also by the next degree of separation, the people to whom they are connected, and even the third degree of separation. These three degrees of separation predicted your happiness more than I had been explained what happiness was, which was that it is an inalienable right, like life and liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and that it's subject to individual traits of my own, that if I just do me, the best I can, that I'm going to be happier. All of a sudden, there's this disorienting um, insight in that it's not about being my best, but it's just as important to interbe my best. What does it look like to inhabit one's own experience and one's own skin in a completely different way? There's knowledge that, that adds to what we know, and then there's knowledge that changes how we understand. And, and happiness first did that for me intuitively at the personal experiential level, right? This crisis led to a very fruitful learning journey. The interesting thing about active inference was that there was a mathematics for describing this that related the internal states and the external states through mathematics of information. The, the way in which science works is familiar and intuitive to many of us. When I say the inside and the outside are informationally connected, that the outside is all the information, all the stimulus of the world, and that the inside creates a, a map of that world, and that the mathematics of creating that map not only reduce the world and is a mathematically efficient way of describing how to get the most signal for all the information that's being received, it, it also enables a more accurate way of sensing the world, of orienting to the world, and, um, and of responding to the world. If there are two forms of probabilistic prediction, a Bayesian being one at the heart of, of active inference and another one being Fisher. Fisher is one that, that says it knows where you need to go and the way that you relate to, to surprises and to mistakes and to errors is you correct back to what you felt your original plan was. Whereas Bayesian probability obviously can have similar results but also can update instead of reacting to surprise as something to be fixed it can sometimes be something to be adapted to. It changes the way that you manage the uh, emergence of differing information from what you originally predicted. In the same way that I described that happiness uh, had a disorienting effect on how to practice it, 
Active inference has a similar disorienting effect about how to co-regulate, how to supervise the evolution of differences between what you expect and what you what you get. Changed my understanding of how cause and effect works. As I arrived to active inference, there were a couple of intuitions about how the world operated that active inference helped evolve. Instead of the world being composed of objects that were fixed and stable, that the mathematics of how to explain things was much more of a dynamic verb. To look at the world as being not nouns, but verbs. Instead of seeing myself as a self, a noun, that I'm a, a being. Paying attention to the continuous verbing and the relating is a different, a different game. We want to be more attentive to these other considerations beyond finance. This all comes back to a new basis for equipping organizations to pay attention to how they're interrelating within, between, and to things beyond their current purview. It is as much of a disorienting and challenging bit of information as I was just, as I was sharing the idea of learning how to be more skillful at happiness was to me personally. The third degree of separation, as I was describing earlier, means that not only the people to whom I'm directly connected, but that really that it's my Dunbar number, the Dunbar number being presumably the 150 to the 250 people that you have meaningful relationships in your life, the Dunbar cubed. So it's beyond your direct sensory observation. And it's like, how do you co-harmonize across groups? How do you sing to use a different kind of language, songs in common to which you're co-oriented? And, um, and these are some of the things that um, active inference provides a mathematics for how this works, how the synchronization of the individual to the group and the nesting and, and how the signaling happens across the nested groups. The mathematics can be daunting, but the promise of it and the ability to do these things more skillfully and reliably is just, uh, it gives me goosebumps. It gives me goosebumps. And this is part of um, uh, why I'm trying to tell this somewhat ineffectively, I would say today, in a story manner and through experience so that people can pull on the intuitions that they have, the memories that they have, and say, I dare to tackle this uncertainty, building upon these intuitions and feelings that I have and co-experimenting with others forward. And so this is at the heart of what the, uh, of what the original invitation that I mentioned was about, was, you know, that instead of the classic hierarchical um, corporation that um, that has as part of its founding documents when you when you plant a seed and you use the template that says we are we are organizing according to these rules even if you want to change it's it's like it's a lot harder to change the constitution than it is some minor policy in a back office in a you know in your in your um uh, you know, and it's some app that you might be uh, writing the code for, you know, and and similarly, it's important to to incubate um, uh, organisms that have the relationality, the mutualism and the holistic perspective codified into and, and the interhiving codified into how they behave individually inter interclustering and then in relation to the commons that they might serve.